Joining us, ladies and gentlemen, five-time Pro Bowler. Yesterday, he had eight receptions for 143 yards and one touchdown. Uh, he founded the Jarvis Landry Building Winners Foundation. Just a couple weeks ago on Tuesday, November 17th, Jarvis Landry hosted his inaugural Jarvis Landry Thanksgiving food drive. Fed over 300 local okay. families on Thanksgiving. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good guy on the field. Good guy off the field. Yeah. First time on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Cleveland Browns, Jarvis Landry. Yeah. How's it going, man? What's going on, guys? Hey, uh, I heard your power went out. Is everything all right over there? Yeah, man, I hope so. I need to hurry up and come back on. <laughs> it's Cleveland. It's cold as hell over there, huh? Yeah, ain't nothing going on. It's gray as hell outside, too. Yeah, it's going to be that way for six months. That's a good thing about the Midwest. Uh, you know, whenever the sun decides to leave, it's just gray for its entire time. Whenever you learned you were going to the Cleveland Browns, or when you chose to go to the Cleveland Browns, what was the thought? Uh, was it like, hey, I'm going to go into a place where we can turn the organization around? And uh, I went to LSU. I was in Miami. I was in the SEC. I'm cool with sun. I don't need it for six months. Is that the thought? <laughs> No, I mean, instantly thinking, obviously, they were, what, 1-15 in 15 the year before. So, yeah. you know, that was a thought in my mind. And obviously, the weather plays a part. But, you know, for me, I just love the game. So, it didn't really matter where I was going. I just knew that, you know, you know, that this would be the result, you know, where we are now and what we have the potential to become. Jarvis, what's it like now, I guess, compared to when you first showed up? I know I, I live in Ohio, so I know there's been a lot of moving parts in Cleveland over the years, but you guys are in a good spot. Like, does it feel different? Yeah, man, it feels special. You know, I was on one playoff team, you know, my seven years being in the league, and I was out in Miami when that happened. And, you know, it's, it, you know, you know, it, you know, it's just a different feeling. You know, everybody's happy for each other. You know, there's no egos. It's, it's, it's you know, that team camaraderie, that spirit. Obviously, COVID has, been in the way a lot of the team bonding stuff but outside of that man i think we're a pretty tight-knit team and that, that's what has helped us stay together throughout everything i've always said I, i've been on a team that almost went completely defeated and i was on a team that almost went completely undefeated and i feel like the one big glaring difference aside from winning games right that is <laughs> the biggest difference in those two particular examples there but the team liked each other on the teams that were good, and the team didn't like each other. Uh, and by the way, didn't like each other doesn't mean like, oh, I hate this guy or whatever. It's just like you don't really fuck with each other. Like it's not really – it's not a tight-knit group. The fact that the Browns have been able to do that is very interesting to me because just a few years ago, we saw you on Hard Knocks give a speech, one of the best speeches I've seen a player give that wasn't – by the way, you normally when players speak, we all know it's like, all right, shut up, dude, like what are you doing? <laughs> but your speech in that wide receiver room was my – immediate introduction to you as a person you as a teammate and everything like that you've had to been a big driver to the changing of the culture did you want to have that like that pressure on you like hey i'm gonna have to be a part of changing a program and an organization that has not had a winning ways for a long long time did, did you know like that was going to be a role for you or is that something you've always done no, I just kind of always been the type of person for me, first of all, like I've always led by example. I try not to talk too much, you know, and, you know, being on those teams um, where, you know, a guy doesn't say too much, but goes out there, leads by example, works hard, has a great worth that usually when that guy speaks, everybody listens, you oh, know, yeah. and, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was an opportunity for me just to being in a room, being one of the older guys that had had some, some kind of success in this league that, you know, it, it was time for something to be said. But, you know, I, I was not the only one. I'm not the only one that helped change this culture. But, you know, I always just felt like, again, coming to Cleveland, you know, it's a big mindset thing, you know, in, in, in anything in life and especially in this, in this sport. And my biggest thing to everybody in the organization, it was not ever taking a field hoping to win. It was like expecting to win, you mm. know, and that was just my mindset, my mentality. That's how I play the game. And I'm happy that that's kind of been trickling down throughout the, 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 the players, the organization, whatever it is. But, you know, one man can't change a culture alone. It takes a lot of different people, uh, uh, of the right type of people in the building as well. What has uh, Stefanski done, especially in this time with, with COVID? Like, what, is, what has he done, I guess, to instill that culture you guys seem to have going pretty well? Yeah, man. I mean, we, we're doing whatever it takes to win. You know, we, the last three weeks we've been playing in environment and conditions that, like, you know, you don't even think you will see in Cleveland. 50 miles an hour winds, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's hailing. I mean – 
you know, and we just doing whatever it takes to win. He, I think the biggest thing for for me, just realizing with Coach Stefanski, man, is, is he a winner and he's about his business. He's all about the details, and that's something that's very important in this league, as you guys know. I think it's I, – I heard him mic'd up. He talks shit too, I think, right? He, he's like a little – he's a little chirpy, right? It's in there. It's in there. He yeah. don't bring it out often, but it's, it's definitely in there, somewhere in there for sure. It's been awesome to watch you guys win this year for the fan base, basically, right? I mean, obviously for you guys, awesome for you guys as well. But that dog pound has been a loyal bunch. And I assume whenever you're at Miami and you go play Cleveland, whenever we were playing Cleveland, it'd be late in the season. It'd be cold as hell. They were nowhere near playoff conversation. And that stadium would be packed with people very drunk, very angry, and very loyal to the Cleveland Browns kind of sucks that this year you guys got it going and nobody can be in the stands. You can't really fill that place up, but it's got to feel pretty good to be like, you know, on the internet, I'd assume there's a lot of support coming for the Browns from the city and from the fans and everything like that. Yeah. It's always been positivity. You know, I mean, since I got here, you know, I think the hope and the belief, you know, has been centered around having the team that obviously they're going to believe in their team, but you know, having a team that is not, you know, consider the laughing stock of the NFL or a team that's continuing to to win a championship just like everybody else is, you know. So I think, you know, for us, obviously, being a unique year, we just allow, what, another 6,000 people. So we got 12,000 people in the stadium now. So, you know, that's good. And hopefully as, as this thing um, dies down, hopefully soon, you know, we can get more people in there as we make this run. Yeah, as long as everybody's safe, obviously. Let's mm-hmm. talk about the team that you have now. Yeah, as long as everybody's safe. Hey, nobody ever <laughs> talks about that. Uh, 75 Ravens players tested positive. It's like, well, let's hope they all survive, okay, first of all. <laughs> then let's worry about the damn games that are happening, okay, and then we'll move on from there. But your team that you guys have, uh, it, it was obviously the Odell Beckham Jr. injury was a massive hit. That is a dynamic player. I know a good friend of yours, and you were a part of uh, potentially getting him to Cleveland. And I think watching him mature, as a player and become a leader has been a lot of fun from outside, by the way, looking in. But your team now, uh, incredible run game with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt back there. Offensive line's doing it. Feels like the offense with Stefanski, with Baker moving. Yesterday, you have 143 yards. Could have had a little bit more left on the table, obviously, but that's going to be every single game. How do you feel about where the team is right now, how the offense is, and what have you guys learned about yourselves to move forward here in an AFC that is very stacked right now? Yeah. Again, playing in playing in this league, like you get to understand that, like you know, you want to start playing your best football around November, December, around this time, you know, and leading up into January, and hopefully everybody wants to play in February. So, I think for us, the best football that we have to play is ahead of us. You know, we're gonna continue to, you know, take take things positive and negative from the games that we've played. You know, especially this last one, like you say, we left points out there, we left plays, yards, whatever. So we're just gonna continue to look forward to learning from our mistakes, growing through the positivity. And, you know, like I say, the best football is ahead of us. Do you think that you guys are uh, – that maybe uh, national media members and, and different people may be sleeping on the Browns a little bit, or do you guys feel like you're, you're getting the respect you deserve? No, I mean, I, I think people know we're coming, you know. Um, <laughs> and and that's that, I think that that's fair to say. You know, uh, we play the type of football that, you know – a lot of these teams play that you know we're going to challenge a lot of these teams so I think for us again like we're just trying to focus on playing our best football um throughout these last couple months and you know just see where we end up I think your birthday was a couple days ago how old did you become 28 on the 28th hey yeah. happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday man. what did you learn in your 27th year you think that you're going to carry into year 28 <laughs> Man, just be grateful, man. Life is too short. Life is hella short, man. And just be grateful. Continue to love my family and, you know, go to work and try to be great. You know, same same things, man. But just as you get older, I think you just get a little bit more wisdom, you know, with things that you hope to grow from. Well, I think it's the little things start getting appreciated a lot more as you get older. You know, like the the things that you just kind of like scrape by, like the little thing. I would assume the wins right now, you guys are enjoying the hell out of those. Now, obviously, socially distanced right. with masks on. Please. Okay, please. Don't dance either. Don't need you dancing in a locker room. COVID, <laughs> whenever you dance, catches the beat and mm-hmm. goes no fun. to whoever else is dancing. Stop <laughs> stop laughing, Jarvis. It takes all of us. It takes all, all of right? us. Please stop laughing. It takes all of us. Um I, I can't wait to watch your guys' team, man, watch you guys go. What is the what is the locker room like? What was it like whenever you guys had – whenever Odell gets in there and you got Baker 
and obviously the Miles Garrett situation last year and the team wasn't winning. What is the locker room like? You guys can't be around each other much, but how has Odell and how has Baker been able to both struggle and continue to rise in that lock? What is the locker room like over there? Yeah, I mean, we got we got good leadership, you know, and that's one of the things that we could continue to build on. And I think that's just one of the things that's helped us get over this hump, right? But, you know, again, like, it's, it's going to be continued effort, continue just stay into the details with, with this unique situation with COVID. Like, we were pretty much home the whole morning and go in for, you know, an hour, two hours for practice, and then we back home. So I think for us, which I like that schedule, <laughs> um, not, being all day. not being in a building all day you know so that's like the perk of, of, of the whole COVID thing but I mean outside of that bro it's you know it's we go in we work you know and we know we don't have time to waste hey do you think some of these some of these young guys that this is all they know this is their rookie year like do you think it's going to be a big uh oh. like an eye-opening experience when they realize hey next year or hopefully next year I'm going to be at the facility 15 hours a day like is it going to be hard to go back to that for no reason <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know if they actually know. It's definitely been a unique year for them. So we'll see. Hopefully they'll get handled it well. Um, you threw a toddy, I believe, what, a few weeks? It was Dallas. an absolute mm-hmm. strike oh, to yeah. the corner over there. Yeah. Let's say, uh, for instance, what happened in the Broncos this week, and I don't know if you know this, every quarterback was deemed ineligible the day before the game, okay? Yeah. So Saturday, while they're going through their walkthrough, uh, from what I've been told, quarterbacks sprint off the field in the middle of it Okay, high risk contact tracing. You guys are all ineligible, even though you've been doing walkthrough. See you later. Can't play. Get out of here. They bring in a guy. If something like that was to happen for the Cleveland Browns, would you be the quarterback? Yes, sir. Oh. Hey, let's think about that next contract negotiation. You know what I mean? That, let's, think about, let's think about that next contact. Uh, we appreciate you so much, man. What do you got today? Just chilling? Man, just chilling, hanging out with the fam. Table work, same thing. Man. You're a cool dude, huh? Yeah, you're a pretty cool guy. <laughs> man, hey, it, the, hey, the price of it, man, it's boring, but it's worth it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jarvis Landry. Hey, 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 hey,